everyone. Welcome back. We're doing another differentiable equations or separable equations problem today. This one is dy over dx equals 4 minus 2x over 3y squared minus 5. And they give us an initial condition. The the instructions for this problem are actually to solve this initial value problem. So you may think that this is an initial value problem, and it is, but the reason that it's a separable equations problem is because you can see we have y's and x's on both sides of the equation, and we actually need to pull those variables apart and put y's on one side and x's on the other side, so that makes it a separable equations problem. So the first thing that we're going to do is separate our variables. We're going to get y's on the left and x's on the right. And the way that we're going to do that first is by multiplying both sides by dx, which will leave us with dy equals 4 minus 2x over 3y squared minus 5 dx. We can multiply both sides move the dx over here. Now we're going to multiply both sides by 3y, 3y squared minus 5 so that the bottom here will move over and we'll be left with x's and y's. So we'll have 3y squared minus 5 dy equals 4 minus 2x dx. So now you can see we have y's on the left side and x's on the right side. That was the first step in this separable equations problem. The second step is to integrate both sides. So we go ahead and draw our really awful integral signs and integrate. So over here, the integral of 3y squared is just y cubed, right? We, we add 1 to the exponent, so 2 plus 1 is 3, so that's our new exponent. And then we divide our coefficient 3 by our new exponent, 3, which is just 1. So we don't have to write it there because the 1 is, is implied. So y cubed minus uh, 5y is the integral of 5 equals, here we have 4x minus x squared is the integral there, and then don't forget to add c to the right side only. We add c to account for the constant. If we added it to both sides, it would just cancel out, so we only add it to the right side always. So now that we've done this, remember first step was separating the variables, second step was to integrate both sides of the equation. The third step is going to be plugging in the values from the initial condition, 1 for x and 3 for y, into our function here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're plugging in 3 for y, so we're going to have 3 cubed minus 5 times 3 equals 4, and then we're plugging in 1 for x, times 1 minus 1 squared plus c. The reason we're plugging in this var these variables is because we want to solve for c. Or, yeah, so, um, so let's see, 3 cubed is 27 minus 5 times 3, which is 15, equals 4 minus 1 plus c. So that leaves us with 17, 15, 12 equals 3 plus c, so c is going to be 9. So we solved for c and we got 9. So what we need to do now is plug that back in to this equation here. Let's just go ahead and uh, plug it in right here. And normally our final step in a problem like this would be to solve this equation for y but we can tell automatically that we can't solve for y. As you can see, we could, we could maybe factor out a y. We get y times y squared minus 5 um, equals you know, the right side. But there's no way to, um, at least not in um, this kind of level of calculus, to solve the left-hand side of this equation for y. So we're just actually going to go ahead and leave it like this. I'm not going to factor out a y or an x. I think it's just as simple to leave it like this, but you could factor out a y or an x if you wanted. So the final answer is going to be y cubed minus 5y 
equals 4x minus x squared plus 9. So that's your final answer. Thanks for watching. See you next time.